Hey guys, this is the Physics Unit 3, Section 3 Notes, Hooke's Law. And no, not Captain Hook, but Hooke's Law referring to springs. So I have a couple springs here, and I want to show you something kind of funky about springs. So these two springs are just about the same length, okay? And I'm going to put two equal forces. So these weights are both 20 grams, which means they're going to provide the same gravitational force or weight. So I've pulled one, and look what happens to the other one. Notice they are no longer close to the same length at all. The reason for that is because each spring has a different spring constant, or what makes it as strong, strongly held to its shape as it is. All right, so I want to point this out, that in general, if you have a spring, if you apply a force to it, it's going to stretch. Now, what's shown in this picture is the force is a weight. So it's a gravitational force pulling it down by adding a mass to it. And if you double that mass, you double the stretch, and et cetera, et cetera. But at some point, it's no longer going to have this linear path to it. So at some point, you're going to extend as much as you possibly can. And this is called the elastic limit of a spring. So this is where it stops obeying Hooke's Law, what we're going to be talking about. So we are not talking about this region. For the rest of the notes, we're going to assume that we are within this nice, pretty region where it is fully elastically applying to Hooke's Law. In Hooke's Law, it's saying that there is a rate of change that is always proportionate between force and the extension or the stretch, and that's the slope here. So the slope is what determines what Hooke's constant is. So let's go through it. All right, first you need to know the formula. Hooke's Law looks like this. So the F of S, or the force of the spring, equals negative K times delta X. What do all those mean? Well, first, F of S is the restoring force of a spring. So if I have a spring, and if I stretch it, or even if I compress it, woof, it wants to go back to this original length, whatever length it naturally is, okay? So this is the natural length or the equilibrium length, and springs want to go back to it. So whatever force would bring the spring back to that position is the restoring force or um, the force of the spring. It's a force, so it's measured in newtons. K is the spring constant, and this is measured in newtons per meter. And this is going to be specific for any specific spring, right? We saw that this guy didn't stretch as much as this guy. And that's because they have different spring constants. The larger the K, or the larger the spring constant, the stiffer the spring. So let's look at a graph of this situation. If you have two springs, spring one and spring two, and you're applying the same forces and then tracking how much change, you'll notice that when each of them has five newtons of force applied, the green, or the first spring doesn't stretch as much as the second spring, right? So at five newtons, the green has only stretched eight centimeters, whereas the red has stretched 10. So when you had the same force pulling the spring, the green stretched less. So if you look at the slopes between these, you'll notice that the green has a larger slope. That's because the slope on the graph is going to tell you the spring constant. So you can determine that spring one has a larger slope, so therefore it has a larger K, so it's a stiffer spring. Delta X is going to be the change in length or the stretch of your spring. And you always want to make sure that this is in meters. The reason is, is your spring constant is in newtons per meter. So over here, if this is newtons per meter, you need this to be meters to properly cancel out. If you put centimeters or kilometers, it won't make give you the right answer. You're going to be off by a factor of 10. So make sure if any of them say centimeters in the problem or anything that's not meters, for the length, you have to convert to meters before plugging into Hooke's Law. Define delta x. So x is the length of the spring in general. So if this is 1x, this is the second x, the difference between the two is going to be your delta x or change in x. So x is the spring length. So delta x is the final length minus the initial. There's a few things you need to know about Hooke's Law. And the first, if you have a spring like this, and this is how you change it, this is an elongation. So this takes the spring and pulls it. So you can also call it stretching the string or spring or elongation. So let's label a few things. If you 
put a line between the original length and the final length, then that change is delta x. You're going to have to determine if that's the positive or negative direction for all of your equations because this is a vector. So if you're choosing to the right, for example, to be positive, then this is a positive change in length. You're going to have the spring constant always push to the opposite direction of wherever you change. So if you're stretching your spring, the force the restoring force or the force of the spring is going to go in the opposite direction of the stretch or go back towards its equilibrium position. If you have this situation, so if you take a spring and you squish it, then that is called compression. So the same thing, the change between the initial and the final is going to be your delta x. In this case, I would call delta x negative because it's going to the left, and I generally call the left negative. So because our stretch is actually negative or a compression, then our spring force is positive because it's in the opposite direction. So the spring force is always in the opposite direction of delta x. Let's write down a few rules about this besides the picture. So the more the spring force is, the more stretch or compression happened. So the more you stretch a spring, the more it's going to pull or push to get back to its initial, initial position. The negative in Hooke's Law, remember how it said negative x and then delta x, negative k delta x? Ooh. That's just talking about the direction. So the spring force is always going to point in the direction that's opposite to whatever stress is applied to your spring. So if you pull a spring down, it wants to go up. If you push a spring up, it wants to go down. Same for right and left. If you pull it to the right, it's going to want to go to the left. The size of a force is always proportionate to the stretch um, or the elongation. So if I pull this a little bit, then I have a little bit of force. If I double how much I pull, then I double the stretch distance. And K is always constant for the same spring, so it doesn't change for the same spring until you've stretched that spring beyond its elastic capabilities, in which case you're actually changing how the molecules are kind of rearranged in its structure. So that will change the spring constant of the spring forever once you fully stretch it beyond its limits. Okay, so here's a practice problem. We have a, a weight of 8.7 newtons is attached to a spring that has a spring constant of 190 newtons per meter. How much will the spring stretch? So the very first thing you want to do is draw a picture. So I've got a spring and it's hanging because I have a weight attached to it. So that lets me know that it's hanging. And I know that the weight of that object is 8.7 newtons. So since it has a weight of 8.7 newtons, I know that that is in the down direction. So the force of the weight is negative 8.7 newtons. If it's going down, I'm going to label it as negative. The spring has a constant of 190 newtons per meter, which means it requires 190 newtons to stretch it one meter. This is nowhere near 190 newtons, so we know we shouldn't be anywhere near a meter. So that's something to keep in the back of your head when you get your answer, does it make sense? All physics problems are mathematically should make sense at the end, so you want to check your work that way. All right, so we know that we have fully stretched the spring. So whatever I've done to this spring, it's whoop, down. Whatever force applied to a spring is always going to be equal and opposite to the force the spring applies back. What do I mean by that? So see how I have a weight coming down. So that is what is being applied to the spring, that weight downwards. Well, the spring has to also push up, and it pushes up with this formula. So you really want to write this down and make sure you know this. That the absolute value, meaning we're ignoring positive and negativeness, the force applied to a spring is going to be equal to the absolute value, again, ignore any negatives, the force of the spring. And that's why over here, if you notice, my arrow down for my weight is the same size as my arrow up for the spring force. And if vectors are drawn with the same size arrows, then we know that they have the same magnitude or the same number. So if my weight is negative 8.7, then a vector that's the same magnitude but the opposite direction is 8.7 newtons itself. So I now know the spring force because it's the same as the applied force, just in the opposite direction. So what we want to know is how much was this stretched? I don't know if it actually started at that position. This is just an arbitrary placement of this little 
little doohickey so you could see it, but whatever this distance is, is delta x. All right, so now that I have all that done and labeled, I'm gonna use my equation for Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law starts with the force of the spring. Great, I know that to be 8.7. That equals negative k, so negative 190, and delta x is what we're trying to solve for. You want delta x by itself but it's currently being multiplied by negative 190. So what you need to do is the opposite, divide by 190, and then do it on the other side, because whatever you do to the right, you have to do to the left. The 190s, negatives 190s, will cancel on the right, and then you have to do this in your calculator. So you'll get negative 0.046 for delta x. Don't forget in your answer, though, you need to make sure you have your right unit. So delta x is always measured in meters, so negative 0.046 meters. Now you might be saying, how do you have a negative distance? Keep in mind that this is a vector. So it's distance and direction. It's a displacement. And our spring was displaced in the down direction. So it was displaced 0.046 meters down. So that's what that negative means. All right, here's another one. A force of five newtons causes a 0.15 meter stretch. How far will the same spring stretch if a 10 Newton force is applied? The very first thing you want to notice is there are two scenarios. So I've got my scenario in red and I have my scenario in blue, but it's talking about the same spring. So if I have the same spring, I can apply one force and see a stretch, or I can apply another force and see a stretch. In my equation here, if you look at this equation, you have three variables. If you have three variables, you need to have two of them to solve for anything else. In my second scenario where my question is, I only have one variable. So that means I need to use the first scenario, the red underlined information, to find the spring constant so that in the second scenario, I can plug that in and solve for x. All right, so let's first look at the first scenario. We've applied a five Newton force which means Newton's third law, equal and opposite forces, there is going to be a spring stretch of negative five Newtons. Now I'm writing all this in red, even though I realize this arrow is blue, just because all of these numbers come from the first scenario. Also my stretch was 0 0.015 meters. So I'm gonna plug that into Hooke's equation. So force the spring, Negative 5 equals negative k times delta x, 0 0.015. I need negative, I need k by itself, so you're going to keep it negative k. Get rid of this 0 0.015 by dividing by 0 0.015. Do that, and it'll cancel. You also have to do it on the left, and then you plug this into your calculator. So you have negative 5 divided by negative 0 0.015. That's going to give you negative 333 equals negative k. Well, you only want regular k, not negative k. So divide both sides by negative 1. k is 333, if you're going to get technical. But now we're plugging it in for the second scenario. So what we just got as k is going to be the same for the same spring because it's the spring constant. It doesn't change for that spring. So now I've got my spring, and now I've applied a 10 Newton force to it which means the spring is going back with a negative 10 Newton force. So negative 10 is our force of the spring equals negative 333. You're like, whoa, Mrs. Dominiac, you just said it was positive 333. K itself is positive 333, but in the equation, we need to have a negative. So that's why this goes back to being negative. And then we are solving for delta x. Want to get delta x by itself? I need to divide by 333. Those will cancel. Do it again over there on the left. And 0 .3, 0 0.030 is delta x. Don't forget your unit. Delta x is measuring meters. So 0 0.030 meters is delta x. Okay. I also want to look at something. 5 newtons, 10 newtons. You doubled your force. What happened to the stretch distance? Hmm, 0 0.015 meters to 0 0.030 meters, it doubled. Because as I said earlier, they're proportional. So for example, if I had taken the same spring and applied a 
15 newton force. So that's three times my original uh, force. Then my stretch would have been three times. So if I applied a 15 newton force to this spring, it would stretch 0 0.045 meters because that's 0 0.015 times three. All right. Here is our last one. So a spring is 0 0.38 meters long. When it is pulled by a force of two newtons, it stretches to be 0 0.42 meters in length. What is the spring constant? So first I want you guys to picture, to picture this. We've got a spring and we're gonna, we measured it. It's 0 0.38 meters. And then we're gonna apply a force and that force is two newtons. So what happens when we apply the force? Well, it does this, it stretches out. And notice it doesn't end here anymore, right? It's got extra bits to it. So after we've applied that force, our now final X is 0 0.38 meters. We know that the spring is pulling back by negative two newtons. So if you look over here, we don't have initial or final X, we have change in X. So that's the very first thing we need to solve for. And we have this equation earlier, the change in x is final dis, uh, length minus initial length. So that's going to be 0.42 minus 0.38. So that gives me 0 0.04. Um, that is meters, so we're good. And now we're going to plug it into our equation. Negative 2, because that is our spring force, equals negative k times 0 0.04. We want k by itself. So I'm multiplying it by negative one. I'm also multiplying it by 0 0.04. So I'm gonna start with that 0 0.04 and divide on both sides. So I've got negative two divided by 0 0.04. That gives me negative 50. So negative 50 equals negative K. Divide both sides by negative one and K is 50. Don't forget at the end, you need to make sure you write your answer with the proper units. So 50 Newtons per meter is the spring constant for this spring. All right, best of luck learning about springs and Hooke's Law, and I will see you in the next set of notes.